The best thing about my childhood is the friends I made. Andrew and Tristan are my best friends, and from a young age, we three have been doing things together. We are all avid outdoorsmen, and at least twice a year, visit new unexplored places. However, many a time we experience unusual things that are not only terrifying, but also make us question how much we truly know about our world. Today, I will be sharing one of these experiences with you. And, I kid you not, this was one of the scariest nights of my life. So, my buddy Andrew is a businessman, and he was overseas in Europe, closing a business deal. A few days before his return, he called us. Hey guys, I know I was supposed to get back soon. However, I want you to join me here, to explore the Alps. What are you talking about, Andrew? Tristan asked. I was equally as confused as Tristan. Mr. Griffin, my new business partner, has a small cottage in the Alps. He offered me to stay in it over the weekend and asked me to invite my friends and family if I wanted to. It looked like a cool place to camp and spend a weekend. I've sent pictures of the cottage on our WhatsApp. We checked our phones and sure enough, a small humble cottage was displayed on our screen. The place had a unique appeal about it, so we decided to go. That's how we planned one of the worst trips of our lives. Andrew picked us up from the airport and drove us to the cottage. We had to hike a few miles up the mountain to reach this cottage. Andrew mentioned on the way that the cottage had everything we needed. It was a big single room with no windows and a tall roof. One corner of the room was converted to a kitchen and there was no toilet or a bathroom. There was a small freshwater lake behind the cottage where we could get water and we had to carry food with us too. It was a picture-perfect location and we were all excited to spend our weekend there. The first night was uneventful. We chatted and played cards till bedtime. Andrew fell asleep pretty soon, but Tristan and I were awake in our beds, chatting for a while longer, when suddenly Tristan became silent. Dude, did you hear that? What happened, Tristan? Heard what? Someone walked past our cottage. Tristan was still in his bed, and so was I. We stayed awake for a while to listen to anyone else passing by, but there was no sound from outside again that night. The next morning, we both concluded it might be an animal and dismissed the incident. Later, we went bird watching, and then around five in the evening, started our campfire. It was so fun to get together with my buddies after so many months. We were laughing and enjoying the campfire until the sun set and we returned to the cottage. It must have been no later than 7 p.m. when we heard the footsteps again. This time, whoever it was, kept on passing by our cottage several times. All three of us were on edge. However, what followed was so scary, weird, and unexplainable. Around 8 p.m., Tristan was thirsty, and we hadn't fetched water that day, so we had nothing to drink. The sounds of footsteps from outside continued. Nevertheless, Tristan and I decided to get water. Andrew was skeptical about our plan and decided to stay in. We reached the lake and started filling our bottles. We could hear multiple footsteps now. Something was really close to us. We tried to be alert and as quick as possible. As soon as we filled our bottles, we bolted for the cottage. Tristan was a few steps behind me. I looked back when a stone came flying from a nearby bush and hit him in the head. Tristan fell to the ground, the water bottle spilling from his arms. A giant, hairy hand appeared from the same bush and tried to pull him inside. I was shocked, but quickly dropped my bottles and got a hold of Tristan. A log suddenly hit the big hairy hand. Andrew stood right beside me with the log in hand. Take Tristan inside. I will get the bottles. I somehow managed to drag Tristan's large, unconscious frame into the cottage. Andrew entered right after, locking the door and barricading it with the tea table. Not a minute later, a large branch was thrown on the roof of our cottage. A human couldn't do so. Plus, the hand I saw was definitely not a human one. It was followed by some rocks being thrown at our cottage from all directions. The noise was so loud, but still, we could hear multiple footsteps approaching. It looked like there were several of those hairy creatures. We knew we were under attack. The stones and the logs kept on banging on the walls of the cottage. Andrew and I were terrified and worried about what would happen if the cottage broke. 
Suddenly, a hole was punched in the wall beside the door, and a giant hairy hand came in trying to grab one of us. I and Andrew picked up our trekking poles and tried to beat and stab the hand. It quickly retreated. When we looked through the hole, a giant yellow eye was staring back at us. Using the sharp side of the same pole, I stabbed the eye and blood spilled everywhere. A horrified scream could be heard and many footsteps started running everywhere. A few minutes later, there was a pin drop silence outside. The creatures had returned to the forest, and we were safe. However, we did not step outside until sunrise. We made sure Tristan was okay and stayed up all night in case the hairy beast decided to show up again. We left the cottage and the country that day, returning home terrified and with lots of questions. After some research, I think they were Bigfoot or large mountain men. What do you think the creatures were? Keep watching to know about the next strange experience we had.